Good evening, everyone, and thank you for attending our very first online information session. My name is Lisa Stafford, and I'm the Assistant Principal of Operations at Hazel Glen College. We also have with us tonight Rebecca Richards, who is the Assistant Principal of Curriculum. Hello, everybody. Lovely to kind of see you here. Families usually have a number of opportunities to visit the school and meet our leadership team and current foundation classroom teachers. We are disappointed that we are unable to meet face to face. However, we are very excited to be able to talk to you tonight via WebEx. Tonight, you'll have an opportunity to meet and hear from our foundation leaders, which we'll introduce you to a little later in the presentation. As this is our first time we're using WebEx for an information night, I would like to point out a few things. On your right hand side, you may have visible a number of people listed as panellists. These are the staff you'll hear from tonight. In this format, attendees will not be able to see each other or unmute throughout the session. We invite you to please use the Q&A, which you'll find at the bottom right hand side of your screen for any questions you might have. So I encourage you to send along any questions throughout the, uh, throughout the whole session you may have, and we'll spend some, some time answering as many as we can later in the session. But first, let's start with our acknowledgement of country. Hazel Glen College acknowledges the Wurundjeri people of the Kulin Nations as the traditional owners of the land on which the college stands. Hazel Glen College respectfully recognises elders both past and present. Just a little bit about us. As I said earlier, I'm the Assistant Principal of Operations in the Junior School. I've had the absolute pleasure to have been part of Hazel Glen College since we opened our doors in 2014. I've had many opportunities throughout my years at Hazel Glen College, and including being a leader in um, curriculum, a leader in wellbeing, and now uh, Assistant Principal of Operations. Um, during my work, I, I work closely with Rebecca Richards and I lead student wellbeing as well as operations. Hi everybody, I'm Rebecca Richards and I'm the Assistant Principal of Curriculum for the Junior School. So I'm lucky enough to work with Lisa and with Anthea Jamison. Um, I've been at the school since 2015 and started off as a classroom teacher, worked my way up as a year level leader, Head of Teaching and Learning and more recently as the Assistant Principal of Curriculum. So before we get started, we thought we'd um, kick off with a, a short video about the day in the life of PrEP. Um, we know that some of you would really like to see what it's like in the classrooms and so that thought that this video might just give you a little snippet as to, as to what it's like in our classrooms at Hazel Glen College. In the morning we do our morning pro In the morning we do our morning process. We take out our read bag, we take out our drink bottles, we take out our lunch box. Put your bag in your locker. And we, we learned our sounds. This is the letter I. I it makes up it sound. This, this is the letter A. I, it makes up a sound. She reads us cool books and she likes books like us. I like this in the number of boys and girls are following your finger as you move along with the word. That's what good readers do. I'm reading. It's lots of fun. It has all kinds of different activities. Start of trucks. Good. Q. 
keep your hand up if you can explain how you work this one out. Nathan? It's five objects on the bottom and the top it has two objects. Um, doing math because of We hope that you enjoyed that video. And along with the video, uh, the next thing that we'd like to bring your attention to is our college vision. And the college vision is really important because it helps to assist uh, learning and teaching, uh, guide our learning and teaching for all of our teachers and our leaders and helps create that unified set of values and beliefs that drives our high performing learning culture. Emma Nima, can you read our vision for us, please? I certainly can, Beth, thank you. We aim to develop resilient, independent, adaptable and innovative thinkers who have a passion to learn, the courage to take risks and the confidence to apply their skill, skills and knowledge in a vibrant learning community. And I think, Beck, just watching that video again reminds me how much I can't wait to have our school full of students. It's heart beating again and just hearing the voices of our kids. Can't wait. Totally agree, Em. You do notice it, don't you, when you see them walking through that corridor. Um, yeah, so the vision's really important and that's something that um, is umbrellaed across our college and that all of our staff use. Um, I guess the guiding uh, leaders that help us get and achieve our vision is our amazing, wonderful um, college principal. And I do have a picture for you, Anthony Stockwell, who's our college principal and oversees um, the K to Year 12 college, and our lovely Anthea Jamison, who is our junior school principal and works really close with us and oversees prep to Year 4. Uh, you will have an opportunity to hear from them yourselves uh, in the prep information evening that's coming up in Term 4 and we'll give you some more information around that at the end of this presentation. Right now I'd like to take this opportunity to welcome our lovely foundation leaders. So they are the three other panellists that are up there on your screen right now. Um, they are amazing and pour their heart and soul into everything that they do. They eat, breathe and sleep prep um, and I've seen this happen firsthand and um, they just love teaching prep. They are highly experienced. So we have Emma Nima who is our instructional leader. Hi Emma, can you say hi to everyone please? Hello everyone again. We've got Jessica Frangos who is our domain leader and oversees curriculum. Hi Jess. Hi everyone. And we've got the lovely Lisa Walker and she oversees our year level leader, is our year level leader and oversees all the prep uh, wellbeing, which Lisa will talk to you about shortly. Can you say hi, Lisa? Hi, everyone. Thanks, guys. We actually refer to them as mad teachers, as I said, because they are truly trying to make a difference and um, that's their goal um, for you and your child as well. Thank you, Beth. 
Um, I just want to talk to you a little bit about wellbeing and operations. So schools play a vital role in promoting the social and emotional development and wellbeing of all students. At Hazelden College, we understand that student resilience and wellbeing are essential for both academic and social development, which is optimised by a safe, supportive and respectful learning environment. We know that if a student is happy, they can more easily foster and maintain healthy friendships, be engaged in the classroom and reach their full potential. When we run our tours, we are able to share a fair bit of information with you, so I'll do my best to share some of it with you tonight. So along, alongside of our core subjects, our teachers provide social emotional learning opportunities via our personal enrichment program. We call it our PEP program. This is where students develop and apply the knowledge, attitudes, skills and, necess uh, skills and necessary to understand and manage their emotions, set and achieve positive goals, understand and show empathy for others, establish and maintain positive respectful relationships and make responsible choices. We also have a buddy program. So every foundation student is assigned a year four buddy to offer support, guidance, friendship throughout the year. Their buddy will spend time with them engaging in fun activities that will help them enrich and strengthen their relationship. This program is one that is deeply treasured by both the younger and older students to wonderful memories and friendships that can often last a lifetime. We also have a house program. So our house program provides opportunities um, to create smaller communities within our larger college community. Through our house program, students and teachers can make strong bonds and connections across the whole college. Once a student has enrolled, they will be allocated one of six houses and they will be either Beachley, Chang, Goods, McGrath, Steins or Wood. Families will always be kept together in the same house. I want to talk to you a little bit about the structures of the college. So our college is structured on stages of learning. These stages include kindergarten, early years, which is foundation to years four, middle years, years five to eight, a standalone year nine, and senior years, which is years 10 to 12. At Hazel Glen College, we are lucky to have a dedicated team of foundation teachers who have a wonderful ability to form strong, positive connections with their students. This year, we have nine foundation classrooms with an average of 19 students in each. So on the, on the screen, you'll have a look at the current foundation team. We have clear roles and structures across all year levels. Leading the foundation team is Emma Nima, who is our instructional leader. And looking after the foundation team alongside Emma is Jess Frangos, the domain leader, and also Lisa Walker, who's year level leader. Your child will build a very special relationship with their teacher. If at any time you have any questions or concerns, please ensure that you speak to your child's teacher first. It is your child's teacher who will know them best. Outside of your child's teacher, you and your child may receive support from Jess, Lisa, Emma, or even myself, Beck, or Anthea. The communication at Hazel Glen College, we um, value strong communication. Apart from the direct human communication with your child's teacher, um, our student learning is shared and celebrated by an online platform called Seesaw. And all of our administrative communication is through Compass. It is very important that all parents download or have access to these two platforms. I also highly encourage you to take, take a look at our school website. Here you'll find a lot of information about our college, as well as resources, newsletters, a dedicated parent lounge where you'll find interesting articles. In the junior school, we have designated areas for our students to play in. There is also communal areas that our junior school students have access to, and they are the basketball court and the oval. To begin, our foundation students will play exclusively in the foundation playground until they gain the confidence and knowledge um, of the extensive grounds um, before they venture out into the wider community. Our, we have a clubs program. So at junior school, at the junior school offers a diverse range of lunchtime, or it can actually be at recess as well, clubs for students wishing to broaden their experiences and connectedness to the school. 
Once our foundation students have settled and they're able to venture out to our communal areas, there will be clubs available for them to offer some fun, engaging activities. This will help them build confidence and offer opportunities to form new friendships. And as I said, the clubs will run either at recess and or at lunchtime. At Hazel Glen College, we absolutely love parent helpers. This partnership is really important to us. In term one, we hold a parent helpers course, which all parents are required to complete before they are able to support in the classroom. Additionally, we ask for a working with children's check and a confidentiality form to be signed. So please watch out for this information in term one. Hazel Glen College um, have available an before and after school program. So the students in foundation who are attending this program will be dropped off and picked up by OSH staff um, directly from their classrooms. They also offer a vacation uh, program through, throughout the school holidays. Uniform at Hazel Glen College is compulsory and we're, we're extremely proud of our uniform. We have a summer and winter uniform, but either one can be worn throughout the year. Our uniform is available at PSW and is in South Moran. Thank you, Lisa. Uh, before we head on to talk about the learning programs, I just wanted to remind everybody that we are here to answer any questions that you may have about enrolling your child into PrEP. And it may also be about something we've talked about right now. So have a look at your screen and at the right hand corner of your screen, you'll see a little box with a question mark in it and a Q&A. If you click on that, another little sub screen should pop up and you should be able to type your questions in there as we're talking. And that way, once we're finished presenting to you, uh, we'll be able to answer your questions for you while we're in this presentation. So please feel free to do that um, as we go along. So I'm going to talk to you a little bit now about our learning programs. And let me tell you, this is something that we're extremely proud of. Our staff work really hard and collaborate beautifully to bring the best programs to your child. Lisa was talking to you before about the fact that we are a K to 12 college. And an advantage uh, to us as a primary school is that we actually have a kindergarten on site. And that to us is a huge benefit because we're able to work alongside with those kinder teachers and get to see exactly what's going on in the kindergarten classroom. So what it is that your child will bring to prep and how they're going to make sure that that's a smooth, seamless transition into their prep classrooms. So they have the ability, our teachers have the ability to pop down to those classrooms, have a chat, talk to the teachers and vice versa. We get our kinder teachers to come up and plan with us. I work alongside our educational leader, uh, Sarah Fraser down at the kinder and um, our communication is really strong which means you'll have the best support for your child um, moving into to prep so that's a huge advantage. Um, our staff work tirelessly to make sure that our programs are fun and engaging. We have a play-based program and that's really integrated closely to an integrated uh, inquiry-based program where the children get to ask and pose lots of questions um, and directly guide their own learning, which is what's integral to our program. So um, in saying that, that means our program is fully child-centred. Um, and as Lisa was just talking, it's really about that holistic approach. So we're looking after your child's wellbeing, um, which is reflected in our structures. We've got the staff there to support them as well as their learning. So what's that going to look like for you? If we go to the next slide, have a look at uh, the curriculum, the content that will be covered for your child. So you will receive um, in their daily, uh, sorry, in their diary that they will receive when they uh, come into prep or into foundation, um, is a, they'll have a timetable. And in that timetable, it'll be communicated to you by the classroom teacher um, what it is that they'll be doing on a daily basis. So for us, our programs are based on the Victorian curriculum, but that also means that our huge focus is on reading, writing and math. So that's something that's um, embedded into their program daily um, and that they are required to do. In saying that, we have a huge emphasis on phonological awareness. So we are, um, have research-based programs 
and our research shows how important phonological awareness is. So we really have a huge emphasis on teaching your children uh, codes, um, the sounds and letters in order for them to read and write. And our prep teachers do an absolutely amazing job at that. We know that that's the building blocks and that's going to uh, set your child up to have a strong foundation to enter into um, the years above as well. Um, you can also see on there we have curiosity. So that's our inquiry program that I was referring to before. And they're pretty much our units of work. So uh, there's four units of work over the course of the year. The first one's about your child learning about their place in the school, which is really important, and learning about the school grounds as well as the people that are there to support them and keep them safe. So that's quite integral. Uh, the second unit is looking at living things, which the kids love to explore and play. And um, if you when, when you see it in action, the classrooms and the learning neighbourhood, um, it's just absolutely amazing seeing the kids being able to uh, go through those programs and the amount of work the teachers put into um, setting up the classrooms is phenomenal. The third unit that they complete is on weather and the fourth one is on toys and the creation of toys, which you can imagine um, gets them really quite excited. To complement these programs, we have our specialist program, which is in the blue box down the bottom there. That means your child will participate in uh, physical education or PE for the entire year. They also participate in STEAM, which stands for Science, Technology, Engineering, Arts and Maths. Um, so we make sure that we integrate that into their classroom learning as well as um, them having that as a weekly program. Um, and we also have Mandarin as a language. Um, Complementing those specialist programs are our visual arts, our, our arts program. So that means your child will participate in visual arts for one semester and the second semester they'll perform in performing arts as well. And as Lisa said before, we also have our PET program, which stands for Personal Enrichment Program. Um, and the teachers are terrific at integrating that social and emotional uh, skills in all of the lessons that they teach. However, we also set aside explicit lessons to teach um, those behaviours throughout the week. Okay, remember just to keep typing any questions that you may have. So that is the what, and I guess what's important to us is the how. So if we go to the next slide now. It's important, just as equally important for us to have a look at the um, the how we're going to get the children to learn. So for us, a huge part of our philosophy is around 21st century learning, and you may have heard of this. And I guess it stems from the conversations um, that you know, we're teaching at your children um, and trying to prepare them for jobs that simply aren't created yet. So it's important that they have, yes, a strong content skill um, and skills and knowledge that they're learning every day, but to complement that, they need that highly valuable skill set to make them more flexible with their thinking, with the ways that they work, and also to think about their living. So to do that, we first and foremost base um, the units around what your children love to learn. The teachers have a great capacity in having conversations and exploring and observing your children to find out what it is that they want to know more about. And they are, um, try and, I guess, um, have those conversations to get them wondering and thinking about their learning. And it is a, a very lovely sight to see when it's happening. And it, you can imagine some of the questions that they actually do get, and they have plenty of stories to tell, but um, it's what, why we do it as well. So so um, for us, we have what we refer to as our learning essences. So to facilitate this love of learning, we have what we call the learning essences. And the first one there is to be curious. So what that means is we want your child to be motivated and engaged with their learning. And they'll hear these words when they're actually um, in the class and outside of the class because it's something that we incorporate incorporate across the college as well. So that's where we establish what their interests are, what their wonderings are, what their personal strengths uh, where they lie and where they need to maybe improve or challenge themselves to extend themselves further. We also have what we know as or call researchers. So we want them to be courageous and have a positive mindset around their learning um, and be able to think critically. So we want them to start to think thinking independently for themselves about how they can locate resources around the classroom and learning neighbourhoods and importantly investigate as well. 
We want your children to be thinkers. So that means we want them to be open minded about their learning, we want them to be flexible and consider other people's points of views. We want them to persist when something gets a little bit tricky um, and they want to give up and don't want to do it. And I'm sure you're possibly hearing that a lot at home right now. We're feeling you, but um, they're really great at building the capacity with the children around this. Um, so you know, it's getting them to think logically, creatively, and importantly, reflect as well. Um, we're really passionate about them being collaborators. And Lisa was talking about that before when we had with our year four buddy system, but also amongst themselves um, in our learning and neighborhoods and classrooms. So that means we want them to have empathy towards one another. We want them to grow up and be compassionate and um, reliable so that they can work with others to achieve those shared goals and also work with them when they're finding things a bit tricky or challenging and give them the skill set to work through that together. It's important that they're self-managers so that we want them to be resilient because we know that things don't always go our way and we're all learning that big lesson at the moment. Um, but also that they can be responsible and take accountability for that and to reflect and grow from different experiences. So that way they can learn independently and make some wise learning choices about um, where they might, might be sitting and who they're working with in the classroom too. And finally, we have communicators. So we want your child to be confident, responsive and respectful and um, really want them to communicate their ideas confidently and through different ways. So whether it's with a small group of children or in a classroom setting or at an assembly, there's lots of opportunities that our teachers create for your child to do this. So there's another whole heap of information there. So please type any more questions away. We'd love to answer them. Okay, if we can move on to the next slide and thank you for listening. Thanks, Beck. Uh, we have had a number of questions come through, so that's fantastic. And we're going to kick start off with a question for you, Lisa Walker. What does tra our transition program look like this year? Thanks, Sam. Hi, everyone. Transition will most likely look a little different this year. Our normal transition sessions are due to start on the 30th of October. And right now, we can't tell you exactly how they will work. We'd love them to be at school, but at this point, we just don't know if that is possible. If because of COVID-19 restrictions, we can't complete the transition sessions at school, then we will be doing them online via WebEx. So more details regarding this will be passed on to all of our enrolled students just as soon as we have them. So we know that transition is a really vital part of your child starting school, probably even more so this year with all the interruptions to their kinder year. We want to make sure that each child feels comfortable and understands how school works and what it looks like. We want to answer all of their questions and reassure them that we are very excited for them to be joining us. So this year, as well as our transition sessions, we'll be sending out a weekly video each Friday via email to all of our enrolled students. These videos will have a different foundation teacher host them each week and it will act like, I guess, a mini tour. We will show them the classrooms, the playground, the gym, the music room, all of those places that they will be doing their learning in next year. We'll introduce them to all of our foundation classroom teachers as well as their specialist teachers and the leadership team. So each week with a video, we'll also have a Google form where you can enter any questions your child may have about school. We'll then answer those questions in the following week's video. I really want to stress that there is no silly questions. These videos are for your child. So any question they have from where are the toilets to will I get to play with Lego at school, please do enter them into the Google form so that we can answer them for all of our future students. We are all really excited to meet our Foundation 2021 students. We look forward to sharing this transition journey with you and your child and giving them a really positive start to their school life. Thanks, Liz. That's fantastic and I think a very comprehensive look of uh, how our transition will run as we know it at the moment. Thank you. Another question we have, Jess, for you. My child's missed a lot of kinder due to COVID-19. How will Hazelden cater for this in Foundation? Thank you, Emma. Great question. We understand that your child has missed a lot of kinder this year and we work closely with our kindergarten teachers to understand where each child is at and what support is needed to provide a smooth transition to school. Our foundation team is very experienced and have a thorough knowledge of the kindergarten programs and their structures. In term one, our curriculum will be adjusted to support the students' needs. Our focus will be on students' social and emotional development, 
Through play-based experiences, we'll foster our students' ability to build relationships with each other and their teachers. We'll support them with their learning of the important skills such as sharing, turn-taking, resilience, communicating and being collaborators within the classroom. We'll also continue to develop the students' fine motor and gross motor skills and create learning opportunities that will allow them to explore, discover, negotiate, take risks, create meaning and solve problems. All the really important foundations for developing literacy, numeracy and social skills. Thanks, Jess. Another comprehensive answer there. Um, I've got another question that's come through, and Jess, I might get you to answer this one if you wouldn't mind. Um, does your child, so will the children have the same teacher in every day, or do they have different teachers throughout the course of their day? Thanks, Em. So your child will have the same classroom teacher for the year um, that will deliver the core curriculum. They will then have different teachers for our specialist programs. So as Beck mentioned earlier, for example, for STEAM, they will have a STEAM teacher for the year. For PE, they will have the same PE teacher for the year. Fantastic, thanks, Jess. Uh, we've got a question that's come through around well, what does remote learning look like for foundation? So I guess I'm going to kickstart the answer off for that one. Uh, and we can talk about the experience that we've had this year. Moving forward, we don't know what it is that we're going to expect, but we are certainly prepared and given the experience that we've had this year. As Jess said, each class has their own teacher. So that teacher has worked very, very closely with the students to continue the bond and the connection through daily WebEx meetings and individual and small group uh, enrichment groups uh, across the week. We have used our platform of Seesaw to, um, what's my word I'm looking for, to uh, send out our activities and continue our learning for the children to be able to do at home. We've also, for those families who don't have access to devices, been able to provide that same learning in the uh, form of a matrix that children can then and families can then work out through their own pace over the course of the week. I really want to stress to you that we have every confidence in our staff and the school to be able to deliver a curriculum and the connection, the relationships at the utmost importance. And I think we've done a marvellous job at it this year and continuing to develop the partnerships. So I might throw it open to Lisa and Jess as your classroom teachers, your experience of remote learning this year. Um, and if you told me 12 months ago, could you teach um, foundation students remotely, I would say, not possible, but we have done it and I really I could not have been prouder of them. Uh, they've really showed us just how resilient they are and just how we think this is a huge change and they just roll with it, really. I feel in a way we've also, um, I guess, become a bit more connected with families every day. I'm on the screen. I might be talking to a foundation student. Their little brothers and sisters are joining in their activities with me. Mum and dad are sitting there as well. So whilst I have definitely missed being in the class and spending time with them, I have multiple sessions with them every day, and I guess I've got to know them on, on a different level with their families. So that was when we didn't know remote learning was going to happen. We still did this. So now, you know, we've taken learnings from our first round of remote learning to improve it this time. And if we had to do it again next time, I'm sure it would be even better. But fingers crossed we don't. No, that's right. And look, just adding to that, Jess, um, you may want to add to this one. Uh, that's come through is what happens if my child, we've got other children at home and I can't do it all as the parent, maybe I'm working as well uh, and trying to keep my job going. How do I support all my children at home with remote learning? Do they have to do all the tasks? Thanks, Em. Yes, yeah, so remote learning has had have been such a wonderful experience. Like Lisa had mentioned, it's something that we probably didn't anticipate that we would be doing 12 months ago. but I guess for us, there's been that flexibility with families. We understand that there's lots happening. People have got lots of things going on in their lives. So we've had that flexibility. So we've, you know, really supported parents in completing tasks when they can and, you know, doing the best that they can. So that might be in the afternoon, that might be early in the morning, it might be on the weekends. There is that flexibility there. Um, 
I guess what's also been really pleasing with the remote learning side of things is we've still been able to really cater for those students' needs and learning. So, you know, all the tasks were differentiated to suit students' abilities and capabilities. So there was, you know, tasks were open-ended, but also um, very targeted for their learning needs. Yes, and I think you, you hit the nail on the head there. It's the adjustments that we made depending on the family situation. So it may mean that uh, students completed, negotiated, the parents negotiated with the teacher that they completed maybe one or two activities for the day, but they got on and they attended the WebEx to continue keeping that connection with the other students in the class as well as the teacher. So it's the communication is key to this and our teachers have done a marvellous job at keeping the communication between home and school going and so, so proud of them and the positive partnership that we have developed this year with our families is something that we will continue to grow and, and strengthen as years go on. Alrighty. Another question that has uh, come through is, are the children progressing through remote learning? So we have noticed that the children are making gains and certainly are learning, learning differently perhaps to how they would have learned in the classroom. But when they came back after the first lot of remote learning, we were so surprised at, yes, the sounds sounds were there. Oh, look how independent they were. They were self-managing. They were more resilient. It was fantastic to see. So we're expecting that again this time round. And the communication from parents have been, wow, my child has actually learned. We've had gone through waves of are they learning, are they not? And yes, they are. And we're targeting by continuing to target and make adjustments with our uh, activities week on and daily even, we are seeing those improvements and those um, those gains there. So very confident that there is learning going on. And when we come back to school, we will make adjustments again and our focus will be on our wellbeing, reconnecting back to, to school, reconnecting back to each other, and we will pick the learning up where the children are at. We have no preconceived idea, it will be something that we will take from where the children are at and continue that learning journey for them. Okay, just having another look here. Um, in terms of school fees, uh, that information will be sent out to you uh, once you have enrolled and you'll get information around that there. Uh, and thank you for the positive comments that are also coming through. That's fantastic. And we've got one more question that I might throw to you, Lisa Walker, if you don't mind. How many foundation classes are we expecting for next year? Okay, so this year we have nine classes with an average of 19 in them. So hopefully by the end of this week, we'll have basically all of our enrolments in. So we'll be able to know for sure how many we've got, but we're really expecting a similar number to this year. So we're thinking nine classes and we really ensure that we keep our class sizes down. So we look at an average of 19 or sometimes less even. Fantastic, thanks Lise. All right, we might swap over now to the next slide, if we wouldn't mind, please. And just to talk you through the enrolment process. So after today, so tomorrow, you will receive an email to all the families who have participated tonight. And what you will receive will be the online or the digital enrolment package, a flyer about the enrolment uh, transition uh, sessions also for next term. and. Should this be the right fit school for your child, then please complete the enrolment forms and all required documentation and return them to our junior school office. That can be submitted online as well. So that would be fantastic if you can do that. Swap to the next slide. Thank you. Once your enrolment has been uh, approved, you'll receive an enrolment um, confirmation letter to let you know. Our next information evening for our enrolled families will be on Tuesday the 20th of October, again at 7pm, and more information around how we will run that and the opportunity for you to be able to attend will come through once you have enrolled. You will also, once you have enrolled, receive information out about our Fly Into Foundation videos. So should you want to uh, be part of that, you need to get your enrolments in as soon as possible. They will 
our fly into foundation transition videos will start very early next term. Next slide, please. And I'm going to throw it over to Jess and Lisa. So thank you, everyone. Yeah, thank you, Emma. Um, we really appreciate you all taking the time tonight to join us on WebEx. We understand that choosing the right school for your child is a really big decision and it may be difficult without being able to visit the classroom and see our students happily engaging in their work or feeling positive and fun in our fun culture. We're here to support you with your decisions. So if you have any further questions, please don't hesitate to call or email the school and we'll guide you through the process. Lisa, sorry, before you continue, we just had one other question that's popped through, so I'm sorry about that, but it's a really important one. Uh, the question is around in terms of children being put in the same class as other children, and is there an opportunity to write down uh, friendship requests? So good news is, yes, there is. So once you're enrolled, we will send out a Google form for you to fill in the names of the students or children that you like your child to be with and all the information is there about how we then go and uh, create our classes from that. So we won't guarantee that you're going to get all 10 names that you put down, but we will endeavour to do our best to put your child with one or more of those children. So stay tuned for that. Thank you, Lisa. Absolutely. Thanks, Sam. So Jess and I have been lucky enough to teach foundation or, or prep, as we still call it often, for a number of years now. Look, it is really just such an amazing year. We really become part of your family because, yes, they, they really do tell us everything that happens at home. Your child will develop their own little, little unique personality. Their curiosity and their independence will all blossom. For most students, there'll be at least another 12 years of school after foundation. So we want to instill a love of learning right from the very beginning. We would love the opportunity to share a special year with you and your child. If you choose to enrol, we'll be holding our next information night on Tuesday, the 20th of October. At the night, we'll provide you with much more detail around our transition program, the foundation team for 2021, and all the fun that will be in store for your child. Thank you again, have a great night, and from all of us, please stay safe.